Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Joe and I'm your real estate expert advisor. This means I seek out the best real estate deals, bring them to you so that you can take advantage and make huge return on investment. Now, several years ago, when I first entered the real estate space, land titles and its application in Nigeria was a huge problem for me. In fact, it was a mystery. Even if I understand the meaning of these land titles, the application was always a mystery for me. And in this video, I am going to share with you a diagram that helped me understand land titles and its application in Nigeria. So without wasting much time, let's jump right into the video. So this is the diagram that helped me demystify land titles and its application in Nigeria. I know it's a lot to look at right now, but by the time I begin to break it down, you will understand why it's so simple to grab. The beautiful thing about this diagram is that whatever the state or title of your land, this will help you to know the route you can follow to perfect the title of that land. All right. So let us dive right into it now. It is good to note that the government are in charge of every land in a country or in a state. There are two basic types of land, which is the acquired land and free land. When you hear people say this land is freehold, it means that this land is free of government acquisition and has always been within the family. It's always been handed down from generation to generation. So it's the traditional landowners that um, occupy this land and they've always passed this land down from generation to generation. So if you happen to buy a land that is freehold or a free land, all you need to do, as you can see on the right there, is to perfect your title to certificate of occupancy. That is, if you are the first owner of that land to register it. Now, subsequent owners who buy that land from you would have to, if they want the title of that land to be in their personal name, would have to perfect the title to governor's consent. Now, C of O cannot be issued twice. A C of O can only be issued to the first owner of the land to register it with the government. Now, once the land is being transferred from one hand to another, the other parties to buy the land must apply for the governor's consent for the land to be transferred from the first buyer to other buyers. So you see the route there. Freehold land is very straightforward. A CFO and then governor's consent. What if someone buys a land that is acquired by the government? What is the process? Now, the first information you need to find out is if this land is committed or global. Now, committed acquisition means that the government have handpicked these lands and reserved them for infrastructure development. For example, the government have reserved this land to build schools, hospitals, police station, fire station, roads, and so on. Anybody that happens to buy such a land has lost his or her money. Now, if it is committed, that land can never be released. The government will never let go of its plan in order to fulfill your personal desire. The government must build roads, they must build schools, they must build hospitals. And these committed lands are reserved for these public infrastructures. Now, if the land that is under government acquisition is actually a global acquisition, then there's good news. There's good news because this land that is under global acquisition can be released to the individual through two processes. One, ratification or regularization. Ratification simply means you, after you buy the land for, from the indigenous owners, you also have to pay the government to release the land to you. That is called ratification. So you are paying for the land twice in ratification. That's one process of getting your land out of government acquisition, global acquisition. However, there is also another process which is called excision. Now, excision is when you buy a land that is under government global acquisition and then you apply for the land to be cut out or released for your personal use or public use or private use. This process where you apply for the government to release the land to you is called 
excision process. Now, once the government approves this and grants you excision, cut out that parcel of land for your use, it will now be gazetted. It will now be written in the government's global book. The government will now put it in its land record. And that land record is called a gazette. So that is when you hear a land has been gazetted. Gazette is a very good title and it, there is no problem with buying a land that has gazette as its title. Even a land that has excision is also a good land to buy. Now, once the land is gazetted, it means that the government has released that land or cut out that parcel of land and released it to the individual to develop. So therefore, the person can now go ahead to perfect their title to certificate of occupancy and then the other subsequent buyers will now have to perfect their titles to governor's consent. So you see there are three separate routes here. There are three major routes, okay? But the point that we want to take note of here is that it is always best to buy lands that are free of government acquisition, which is freehold, or lands that are under global acquisition, which is which can be released but lands that are under committed acquisition can never ever be released so you can see the the framework of land titles and its application in nigeria you can save this video so that you can always refer to it in case you need further clarification in future you can always refer to this video so let's look at land titles in nigeria and their meaning as a recap of the diagram we just considered. Historically, all lands belong to the indigenous families dwelling on such lands, but the Land Use Act, enacted in 1978, vested all urban land within a state in the state governor to hold on behalf of the people. And as such, the governor is therefore responsible for allocation of land in all urban areas to individuals, residents in the state, or to organizations for residential, agricultural, commercial and other purposes. Under land title, we have excision and gazette. Now, to excise a land means to cut it. This is the process whereby the government releases a parcel of land back to the indigenous owners of such land for the purpose of residential and commercial developments. When this excised parcel of land is published in government official gazette, such a land is said to have gazette as title. Excision and Gazette are very good titles for a piece of land. Now, what of Certificate of Occupancy, also known as C of O? A Certificate of Occupancy is usually issued by the state government and it connotes that the state government has officially released the parcel of land to the applicant for 99 years. This is a very good title and it is also a very famous title. Most people know about this title and its meaning. Now, what is governor's consent? When a land with certificate of occupancy is sold to another person, it is required that such a person must now obtain the consent of the governor before the transaction can be deemed legal in the eyes of the government. So these are the major land titles in Nigeria. But there are other subtle land titles in Nigeria which you seldom hear of, but they are also very valid. For example, court judgment. Now the court judgment is a title granted by the apex court of the land to resolve a land dispute between two contenders for same parcel of land. Once the court decides on who should take the land that is under dispute, the other party has 50 days to appeal this decision. If after 50 days the other party does not appeal this decision, that means the court judgment will stand. So sometimes you can hear that a land title is court judgment. That is also very valid once it is verified. There is also registered deed of assignment. Now a deed of assignment is an agreement between the owner and seller of the property and the buyer of the property showing that the seller has transferred all his rights, titles, interest and ownership to the buyer. So it's a written document between the buyer of a land and the seller of a land. So I hope this diagram and this explanation has really demystified land titles and its application in Nigeria. Now I would advise you to watch this video again and again if you have issues understanding these titles because 
People who go into land transactions without understanding land titles and its application usually end up in big trouble. Is either they lose their money or they end up being tied to litigation and so on and so forth. Every single person desires to own a land. And if you don't understand land titles and its application, then it will be difficult for you to make informed decision when acquiring your personal land. So, I hope that with this video, you now understand and clearly have demystified land titles and its application in Nigeria. If this is your first time here, please click the like button, subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that each time I bring out valuable content like this, you will be the first to be notified. And until next time, keep investing.